<laughs> New Asuma says video, Minecraft ruined my life and dreams. <laughs> well, you know, it took me on a different path, one I didn't expect. So yes, I have been in an inspired state, which I cannot follow up on. I cannot, do not have the time. I have other commitments and things that I am doing currently that stop me from just firing up the music space and jumping into it. But it started with a video and I came across it because Orang, or Orang, or I, I hear people pronounce it differently now, uh, created a sample pack and I was like, oh, I'm going to download that and one day I'll mess around with it and have some fun. So I do that and I stumble into a link to a Dungeon Synth documentary. And I love Dungeon Synth and I was so stoked that someone had put together like a, a proper documentary. It's like 45 minutes. It goes into the pre-Dungeon Synth era. It, it focuses on the coining of the term Dungeon Synth and then it goes into some post Dungeon Synth stuff as well. And I had a little, a little feeling, I wouldn't call it sadness. It's definitely not sadness. But just this feeling of like wondering what if. Like often when you wonder, oh, if only and what if, it, it tends to be sad. But in this case, it wasn't because the alternative to the what if is all of this, right? All these videos, live streams, all this fun we have together. That is what has happened instead of this other thing. But uh, watching that documentary just really brought back the excitement of Dungeon Synth when I was first discovering it, which was right as that term was being coined. So I was one of these people that were exposed to the music before it had its name. I would say more of the melodic, sort of uh, positive, po more positive vibes kind of side. Um, a lot of Dungeon Synth can be like moody and dark as well, which uh, this music is, but it's just got more of a positive spirit about it, whereas some of the stuff can be rather dark and esoteric and whatnot. What, what, what? <laughs> Girl says, X is old, back in the day the genre wasn't even named that. Yeah, well it didn't have a name, right? Like, and a lot of music starts out with not having a name, like Fresh Metal didn't have a name. I think when Metallica put out their first record, Kill Em All, which for a moment in time was probably the most extreme record of music on the planet, I think it was just called Speed Metal and Fresh hadn't emerged yet. So I had this moment of just, just feeling like I could have been a part of that. Like, it was quite a possibility, and it's not anything big. You know, Dungeon Synth is, is not a big thing in the world. It is a niche micro-genre, and being a part of that is not about notoriety or anything of the sort. It's, it's really just about being a part of a community, being a part of an adventure, something that's happening, and it's close to my heart because it's music. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't call how I felt like sad or anything because what had happened in place of that has been fascinating and interesting. Everything we do here has just been like a wonderful journey. So I could never be sad about it, but music is like my, uh, my thing, right? It's very dear to me. And so right as the, the, the term Dungeon Synth was coined, Lord Leviticus was the artist in that video referred to as being the sort of focal point of that, which is interesting because I was, you know, not only listening to Lord Leviticus, I was talking to Lord as well, um, using their music in my videos, etc etc right and then the second person that they sort of focused on after Lord Leviticus was Orang again another musician who early days of Hermitcraft uh, reached out to me do you want to use my music it's Dungeon Synth I was like oh I love this stuff like this Lord Leviticus thing is great I've been in touch with those two and that they've sort of been like the two big figures right at the beginning of Dungeon Synth taking its name taking its form and do you know what I did right around then of course I was making music as well as videos I made my own little bit of Dungeon Synth Synth. Now, I'm not going to say it's anything great. It was just a great experience for me to create that record. It's now on Spotify. It's on Bandcamp. If you so happen to be into the sort of music we're listening to right now, you can go to linktree.asuma.co and find a link to it there because whenever I talk about other stuff I do and links, we've made that one place for everything. So, you know, my plan with uh, Soulside Eclipse was always to do like uh, symphonic black metal slash metal, like less extreme, more melodic, a lot of metal guitar and synth melding together, pianos, that kind of thing. And they were always going to be like the main stems. There was going to be, you know, chapter one, two, three, four. They were just going to be like that. So that was the main, the main thing that I wanted to create. Like when I think about how I came up with the name, everything that I was listening to at the time was like symphonic black metal. That was like a real big thing for me. And so those were going to be the main chapters. And then anything else I wanted to do, I could just do under the same name, but the main style was just reserved for those chapters. That was my plan. And uh, my plan got foiled by a silly little game, computer game. I forget what it was called though. I know, it just, it took up a whole bunch of my time all of a sudden. Then it became a job, really weird. I mean, playing computer games for a job? What are you talking about, X? What have you been smoking, son? I think you're still an influence for the Dungeon Synth genre right now. 
by exposing the genre so much, says Taubar. I don't know. I really don't know how much exposure I gave to it because I think its presence in my videos was not... I mean, I don't know how many people then went and branched out and explored, but I never I never got like a feedback of people saying Dungeon Synth to me very often as in like through your videos. I do not recall that at all. Maybe, maybe it's out there. Maybe like at certain points in time, someone did comment something, this, that, and the other. I do not recall it really. So I kind of think like... Like I was just sort of there. It is possible though, it is possible that it helped more people find it, which is great. But I, I didn't get a sense that like my role was ever important in any way. It was just, yeah, I definitely, you know, introduced that to some people, but I don't really know if they went off and became a big fan of it. <laughs> New Asuma says video, Minecraft ruined my life and dreams. <laughs> well, you know, it, it took me on a different path, one I didn't expect while I was very determined and focused to get on a different path. <laughs> Ironically, it was like in the downtime of distraction. You know, I would still play computer games casually back then. Um, just felt like you needed it. Needed a little bit of like brain zonk out time. It's very interesting how like, when you're working the nine to five, you, you, you need that a lot. And then when all of a sudden you're like the master of your own destiny, which sounds very dramatic you know you're you're in control you're doing what you do you don't need that like zonk out time as much anymore you're ready to like go in all the way put all your time into it so yeah i was like there right as the term got coined what i remember is when i was making that record i knew it was dungeon sim so i think i must have happened into the scene right as the term got coined which was fascinating and who knows where it could have gone i did not do a lot to promote my record and maybe i could have used my channel early on and then it might have been held in some regard or whatever but i don't really care for that that much to me it's about the act of doing the music that means the most I can be pretty confident that you've introduced Dungeon Synth to more people than anyone else in history has. Even not all those people went out and brought the album, says the thingy. I mean, I don't know how you quantify those things. I think it's like, maybe if you're in Dungeon Synth circles and you keep seeing the channel name pop up. Otherwise, I think it's more of a hunch. Obviously, I've got a lot of subscribers, lots of people watch the videos with the music in. It's got the potential to, but that doesn't necessarily translate to actual converts, if you like. It's like when, um, you know, a record label let's say, goes after a YouTuber who's got a song in their video. What they don't realize is they're not stealing the song and making money off of it because people didn't go to that video for that song. What's happening is they go to the video for the thing they know and it gives exposure to this new thing. Watching the video just again reminded me of these ideas that I have knocking around in my head of like certain sounds that I like that could be mixed with dungeon synth aesthetics or I've had so many of them over the years and it doesn't really matter like how many they are. There's always there's always something to go jump in and do and get involved with and just really made me feel like, you know, one day I'm gonna get back to that and it's gonna be so much fun when I get there. But you know, that day is not tomorrow. Might be might be quite some time, but it's gonna happen. I made this like promise to myself that uh, I will get there. Because I've been wanting to do it for so long. And that's one of the reasons I decided to uh, uh, put my music out properly on Spotify recently was just a case of like uh, it's always someday in the future and like if I'd have just put that stuff out way earlier there might just be more people listening to it that will at some point in the future jump on and enjoy whatever's next so might as well just get that stuff there ready. Where can I find a good Dungeon Synth playlist, says Really Greeny. Uh, just search for Dungeon Synth playlist. And if you go to YouTube, there is, um, and you search Dungeon Synth, there's the Orang 2 hour video. And also there's the Dungeon Synth archives. Those are some good places to pick up some Dungeon Synth. I mean, you've got Jalur playing right here. That could be a place for you to start. You've got my record. My records, to my ears, like, it's, it's got a little bit of something else in it. Like, I didn't really restrict what I was doing to, like, a total aesthetic. Like, there's a sound design track in it, trying to tell a story. There's some stuff that's more lush and focuses on pianos. The low fidelity ambience is a bit of a mix of things, but um, the, the idea of the record is that there's an actual story. Um, it was really, really, like, an amazing thing to experience as I was creating it was just, like, this... Each of the songs started to, like, build up an identity, and with that, they started to feel like a story like there were things that would link together and once I once I got my head around that then I could start to write songs more with the idea for the story coming first which was quite different yeah and I think the last song that I wrote which is called Heroes End I vividly remember just being I was working I was in some woods I was just spending like the day doing the work constantly like thinking about how this song was gonna work i was like hearing the melody in my head and I had this idea of like the reverb as the final bit of the song just keeps like going on the reverb needs to like get deeper and denser to like really enforce the sorrow that it's trying to express and then i, I like got home and i got to execute it and it was just really gratifying it was like oh th this works 
So did you enjoy the waffle? Want to hear more stories and thoughts? Check out the playlist link below if you want more videos like these and of course subscribe to the channel to catch future ones and go to linktree.asuma.co if you'd like to find links to all of the other activities that I do including playing guitar, making music, Minecraft videos and much more. Go check out that link.